Uh, it was the, the one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. You guys in prison um, bless me without even knowing it. Just having me just be there to let you guys know that how that I ain't forgot about you, that I love you, and that I care for you. And then to see the impact that it has on you guys really just changed my heart, made me want to go in there and love on you guys more. Have you or someone you know had your life turned upside down because of your past? Of course I have. Everyone does background checks now, which makes it hard to bounce back. What do you believe? I believe your background shouldn't hold you back. It, sh it should pay you back. This podcast will inspire you motivate you and inform you with everything you need to rise above your past and and not be afraid to say go go ahead check my background my name is jaden gum and this is background check you already know let's go you can check my background i'm a forgiving felon so tell them that i won't back down now you can bet i won't live in regret it's time to earn some respect you are tuning in to background check Hey everybody, welcome to Background Check Podcast, where we believe your background shouldn't hold you back. It should pay you back. And brought to you by Forgiven Felons, helping people with the past. Realize their future. And also brought to you by... No way back. Way back, the premier re-entry uh, brokerage firm in Dallas that, uh, that will give you everything you need when you get out. So have your family call them. The number's on the screen right now and at the end of the show. So uh, so here we go. You ready? Yes. Are you excited? You're, you're super excited about this show, right? Because here we are, we got ASAP Preach. Is that how you say it? ASAP Preach. Yeah, ASAP Preach. All right. Did you have Did you have a question for him right off the bat? Yes, I did. Okay. What? I know ASAP stands for as soon as possible. What does ASAP mean to you? So ASAP, um, well, ASAP to a lot of people means as soon as possible. But when I was a tattoo artist, right? I was a I was already preach at first. But when I was a tattoo artist, um, I changed my Facebook name to ASAP Tats because I wanted to do tattoos as soon as possible. Like, come hit me up, you know? And so people were already calling me Preach. And then some people were already calling me ASAP from my Facebook name. But I realized that, you know, um, I was telling my wife, what should I do? You know, what should I do about, you know, my name, you know, being ASAP? And I don't want it to be like, she was like, make it ASAP preach. I was like, I don't want to be like copying ASAP Rocky or anything like that, you know? And she was like, well, ASAP can stand for always say a prayer. Mm -hmm. And so when we came up with always say a prayer, I was like, I like that. So we, we, we stuck with ASAP always say a prayer. And so, you know, and I, do, I try to stay to that motto at every and, and a lot of things that I do. We'll make sure we want to pray first, you know, because mm -hmm. prayer works. Mm -hmm. You know, That's awesome. That's cool. Another acronym I like with prayer is PUSH. Pray until something happens. Yeah. I think I said that to you whenever you were telling me about being sick. I don't know if you caught it, mm -mm. but when you were telling me about it, you were sick and, and still sick a couple of days later, I was like, well, I'm just going to push, pray until something happens. Okay, cool. So uh, now she has a friend who wanted to ask you a question too. Do you have a friend, the uh, question from the friend? My my friend, she, she wants to know what's your birthday? My birthday is April 15th, 1988. All right. Hey, go, Ainsley. All right, Ainsley. Happy birthday recently. Nice. Tax baby. Yeah. All right, Tax man. Baby. And um, and then 1988 was the year that I graduated high school. <laughs> so that's how the, the age difference between me and ASAP. So, uh, man, we're glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know you're local here to Dallas, uh, so you didn't have to drive far. But you still had to drive almost an hour. So thank yes. you so much yes. from the bottom of our heart. Yes. Thank you from Jessa as well. Sure. And uh, it's always fun to have people in the studio. Yeah. So, um, all right, man. Well, listen, the the the, the documentary yeah. is just blowing up on Pando, bro. Right. I mean, so many people. It's staying trending. I haven't checked today. Um, we're, we're recording this, and I haven't checked to see if it updated yet today. Yeah. But I bet you it's going to be in trending again because uh, we're pushing it. And it's just a great documentary. Thank you. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Go watch it. Get it back up and trending. Watch it. It's incredible. So uh, so for everybody that may have not watched it or maybe you're still trying to watch it, you know, yeah. it's an hour and a half, um, just give us the, the, the condensed version of the story yeah. and what people can expect, like, when they watch it, you know? So, so um, you know, what got me even starting to do the documentary is that I, I woke up um, I was actually dealing with a lot of like discouragement, like with creativity, with my music. 
And I got off the phone with Rare Breed, and believe it or not, and he said something profound to me that really changed my my mind is um, about releasing music. Is that I needed to do it on God's time because throughout all my ministry and my career, I've been just dropping album after album so many times because that's the norm. Yeah, it just everybody does working so that people will see you all that like stay relevant type of thing, and um and so I was at a place in my life where I was like, you know what. I want to, I want to go on your timing now, Lord, you know, I've already, you've already got me to a place right now where I'm, I'm provided for, I'm taken care of. So I want, I want to be elevated, but at the same time, I don't want to go before you, you know? And so I sat back and I was like, Lord, what do you want me to do right now though? I end up going to, going to sleep, having a dream about me going back to the apartment complex that I went to in the, in the yeah, documentary. Yeah, yeah. And in the apartment complex, I did not want to be there. Mm. I, I was, I, I knew in my, in my dream, I lived at this house and I was moving back into the hood part of the part, you know, the, the, that city. And I didn't want to do that. Yeah. And there was people in my dreams needing um, help and like wanting me to like, they were giving me so many hints of just needing some encouragement, yeah. right? And uh, you're talking about the apartment yeah. complex, not the house that you actually yeah. went and in the, and yeah, the Yeah, the apartment complex. And, and, and they were like, like you could see the, feel the hunger mm. that they just needed some encouragement, but I didn't want to tell them about yeah. God. I didn't want to tell them. I was just like, I just don't want to be here. I woke up that morning and God was like, I want you to go back there. And I was like, why and how? Like, and then he just started flowing. Like he said, he, he, I, he gave me an idea to do a video and the vision behind it. And I literally laid in bed for an hour and wrote the beginning to the end of that whole documentary of how to build it. Uh, he gave me the vision of what needs to be talked about, who needs to talk about what uh, this part of my life uh, gave me names, faces, all of that. And then it ended up just taking off. So the documentary is pretty much my whole life not all about not everything is coming from me which is really important people because i could sit here and and talk about my my all these things that i did in my life and some people just be capping yeah you know what i mean some people be lying about their story and testimony there's other people there's people in the documentary that actually get the talk about who i was and and i think that that adds i thought that was really neat to hear yeah. every single one of those people yeah talk about you in the way and they didn't feel like it wasn't feeling like they were having to try to make up something yeah like you know like man what do i say man it just rolled off yeah with genuine uh just you know love for you yeah and uh and so that that told a lot that said a lot about yeah. you so and so yeah the documentary is pretty much my whole life story on how i became asap preach and that's why we named it Always Say a Prayer, yeah. um, because that's who I am, you know, ASAP. Uh, and so, you know, if you want to know anything about me and maybe some people that are watching this right now that even probably like found my music before going to jail. I mean, it happens. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, and you're like, man, I get to actually know who this guy is. A lot of people uh, listen to all these artists and you become a huge fan of these people, but like you don't know who they are. You know, this is a perfect opportunity for you to know exactly who I was, what I've been even after knowing God. And 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 I'm I'm going to a level of transparency in my documentary that's like, okay, well, now you know that this guy ain't putting on no front. Right. He's not acting holier than now. He's really gone through some things. And that's what what we all do as humans and 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 you know, as people of God, is that God brings us through some things that may not be comfortable our life ain't perfect as soon as we come to christ and so when we come to christ it's just you know it's a it's a we learn lessons and he shows us things about us that is not perfect that hey we need to fix these things and usually that happens through mistakes and and, and pain and hard times you know i like the way you, you talked about that because and i like the way you address it in the, in the documentary you don't hold any punches you talk about even when you came back to god you still had times uh, after that where you struggled, yeah. and a lot of a lot of the the big C corporate church. A lot of times we, you know, and I'm much older than you, so I've, I've I got to see some of the real legalistic days of when I grew up as Baptist, you know, and then Pentecostal both had their own own legalism they were dealing with, you know. Um, but it was just like if you didn't get saved and turn around everything, like 
like everything's cold turkey, then you weren't really saved. You yeah. didn't, you didn't mean the prayer. Yeah. You, you didn't mean it from your heart. And as I got older, oh, I won't even say it. After I went to prison and then realized that, man, relapse, falling, you know, getting back up, all that stuff is just a part of the discipleship part. Mm-hmm. There's a moment of salvation yeah. and then there's the journey of salvation. Yeah. And uh, you showed your journey. Oh, it's incredible, bro. It's incredible. And it just lets everybody know because you had a lot of people in your life that came around you that uh, were holding you accountable. Yeah. And uh, but you were making yourself accountable to them, too. Yeah. And that's the most important part. Yeah. So um, now let me ask you this. So you, you didn't really do a whole lot about what you're what's going on in your life now. Right. Like, you know, all the concerts and all the music yeah. and everything. So was that on on purpose? Is there going to be a ASAP part two, you know, like with well, after all that or? Well, we do talk about um, I think that's just you know this this is for the people that are coming on now and 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 that are wanting to know a lot about me they get to go see gotcha. the past right and a lot of people kind of can see that by just following me through the social media they get to see what's happening out there people are getting baptized me going into the prisons and and um and going to all these churches and into the streets to minister to people and so um, we did talk a little bit about that at yeah. one point yeah. in the documentary where my manager was talking about what happens in the ministry. And, and they did. When he was talking about that, they cut to some of the yeah, some some B-roll of the documentary. Stuff. Stuff. So people get to see what what is happened from after all the pain and all the mistakes and all the the, the trauma that I went went through as a child and, and 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 how that turned into something so beautiful. Yeah. You know, not perfect. But just something that, hey, this guy is thriving in Christ now. There's po- there's it's possible for me too. Like people get to see that now. And I think that that's really important about the documentary is that it really just gives hope. And I've bro, every single person that's watched this documentary, every single one has messaged me and said, I didn't know we had this much in common. And it made me feel good because there's such a persona in Christianity where you just have to act perfect. Yeah. You know, and so it made me feel like, okay, good. I'm not alone too. I was worried if I was going to be the only backslider that's ever been. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if anybody's going to be relate to the backsliding stories, but you know, there were so many people that's done that too without even they felt like it was. And a lot of people are finding healing because they're allowing themselves to come into the yeah. light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ex- and confess. Hey, I don't have it all together right now either. I've been trying to put on this mask for so long, and I'm so tired. You know, I, I'm a mess and I may seem like I'm a, uh, like on fire. I may be preaching and pastoring churches, but I, I don't, I don't got it all together either. And, and I and thank you for your vulnerability. Cause now I can, I can come to, you know, the realization that I don't have to act like it's okay. I don't have to act like everything's perfect. You know, I, I, I can, I can really deal with some issues. The enemy wants you to hide and, oh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, keep all that Isolate, stuff. Isolate, suppress in, everything, yeah. you know, and suppress it all. And, and, and that's, that's one thing that God wants you to do is just bring it into the light so he can work. Once you're al- able and humble, you're humbled enough to just say, God, I need your help in this area, this area I'm struggling in this area. And, and you just say, I need help. Then, then you give him room to help. And so I think that's a beautiful yeah, thing yeah, yeah. you can do as, as a tool. Well, let's talk about the concerts. Yeah. Because your concerts are not just entertainment, man. Uh, your concerts are uh, evangelistic, yes. you know, and there's there's uh, there, there's baptisms at your concerts. Yeah. So, uh, Jessa, you've been to a concert. So uh, what did you think about that concert last year we went to? And because uh, that's when you got to see uh, ASAP preach for the first time mm-hmm. uh, and hear some of his music that day. So what did you think about? The concert and uh and and then what do you what do you think about the the, the next one we're going to? You better say something nice. <laughs> I thought it was really fun. Like I liked the building we were in yeah. because it was like elevated seating at the back so everyone yeah. could see it. It was like that theater, like the, the theater in Gates. Yeah. yeah. It was really fun. And and I actually threw a clip of that in the documentary. <gasps> okay. Yeah. yeah. Go back. Me and Rob were crossing paths and you can okay. Kind of see it in the documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. And I like, I like, I like Rare Breed too. 
I like that he was in the concert too, and I'm really excited for the next one. Yeah, yeah, that no. was a very special day for me because I got to baptize my own blood brother. I see. I didn't know that. Yeah, I saw you baptize him, but I didn't know it was your own blood brother that yeah. night, man. And we don't, we never grew up together. Wow. And so he came out to an event. He was all jacked up. Wow. And man, he he, I was I went up to him. Do you want to get baptized today? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got it. Love in. it, man. I and love ever it. Ever since then, he's been walking in faith. He's been walking hard for Jesus. Man, and, that's and, awesome. And, uh, and, um, he picked up a dr- he drank alcohol one time since then. Wow. And that's 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 pretty good from somebody. You know what I mean? So I'll- talk about what baptism means to you and why y'all do it. Make sure you do it and offer it at the concerts because, you know, to me, what I tell people, our guys in the house when they get out of prison that they haven't been baptized. You know, I, I encourage them to be baptized as ASAP um, because it's it's almost like, to me, it, it's transformative. Not It's not salvation, right. okay, but it's something that Jesus told us to do, and he told us to do it for a reason. And I, I give the example of, of a cucumber mm-hmm. going into a, the vinegar, and, it, and then the cucumber absorbs all the elements of the vinegar mm-hmm. to the point where when it comes up out of the vinegar— it's not even a cucumber anymore. Mm. It's a pickle. It's pickle. That's good. And so I, you know, I, I, I tell people it, it's also your, your spiritual wedding ring. Yeah. So it's like when I wear, I got my tattooed on mine now and you, I see you have a wedding ring on. When you wear that, it's a public profession of a, of a, of a private commitment you made to, you know, we made to our wives. Yeah. And so baptism is a public profession confession of a, a a decision you made in your heart to serve God. So talk about what baptism means to you, why it means so much and why you offer it at the, at the concerts as well. Sure. Um, I, I really enjoy um, doing the baptisms because you just see that these people are like, you know, they're at rock bottom. You know, a lot of these people are like, man, I want to, I want to do whatever it takes to, to um, just solidify my, my relationship with the Lord in another way, you know, taking that commitment to a whole nother level. You can see that these people are wanting a new start and, and no other like, like event in their life that is more special than having, uh, obviously allowing the Holy spirit to come into your heart. And when you accept Jesus in your, in your life with, even without baptism, beautiful day. Right. But having also those those mo- that those special moments in your life where you're like, this is when I went down and I came up and I completely committed my life to the Lord. And usually when I when I baptize people, I sig- I I let them know that look when you go down, that your old person is staying down in the water, and the new person is coming up, and the water is hold bearing witness that that old person is staying down. So like when you even go to heaven, even the water's bearing witness that that old person's down. And so I like to think of it that way. And I think that's really cool for them to think like, man, even the, this water that I'm in right now is about to bear witness. Yeah. That I'm about to change. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Man, absolutely. So I think that's pretty cool. And I think it's also, um, it's the only way we have to identify with, with Christ. Yeah. You know, cause he, he, he really died yeah. and was buried and rose again. And for us to, to, to identify with him, that's, you know, we're not going to really die on a cross and die for everybody's sin and raise, raise ourselves from the dead. Yeah. So that's a way to do that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the fact that he gave us that way to do that, yeah. to do exactly what you're saying, the water bears witness to us, you know, dying to our old, old self. Yeah. And, uh, and I love that y'all do it. Y'all going to do it. The, is this one coming up? Yeah. If, if, if there's a, if there's a horse trough there, or if I have a bottle of water, we're getting it in. You know what I mean? Be prepared. Well, I know it's at a pavilion, so it's outdoor. I the one we went to was indoor, so I don't know. And I don't know if that yeah. theater provided that tub for y'all, or if y'all brought it. Like one of your, uh, yeah, the 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 guy that put the the event together, he had it. Yeah, okay. he brought it. So, so can I announce some uh, tour dates, or do you have a memorized? Do you have it memorized? No. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, listen. If you are in the Dallas area, well, let's see. You're going to be in. Uh, you leaving? When are you leaving from uh, Mrs. Uh, Missouri? What's MS? Uh, Mississippi, Mississippi tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow morning, Brandon, Mississippi. Brandon, Mississippi, Brandon. in the house. All right. Uh, and then he's coming back to Texas June 18th, 19th, and 20th. 
Bastrop. Bastrop County is down there where I used to be in prison, Lockhart, Texas. Wow. Uh, and then June 19th going to be Waco, and then they're going to make their way back up. Do you know where these are in these towns or I no? I have no idea. All right. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to find out. Uh, and then Plano, going to be June 19th, Plano, Texas. That's when we're going. Jessa, you ready? You excited? All right. Well, maybe we'll... Uh, Maybe we'll uh, video some of the some of the concert and uh, show it to you guys on Pando. Yeah, that'd be cool. July fourth, uh, gonna be back in Mississippi, Yazoo City. July sixteenth, Kodak, Tennessee. July nineteenth, Roanoke, Virginia. August seventeenth, Cologne, Minnesota. Oh, come on, Minnesota. Uh, September twenty first, Monahans, Texas. Where's Monahans? Do you know where that is? Yeah, it's like uh, forever, like east. Or west, to west. West, like out towards uh, El Paso or somewhere? Yeah, for okay. like, and, and like, this is a place where there's actual tumbleweeds. Oh. Like, you cross in the road, wow. there's tumbleweeds. Like, you're like, what in the world? There, I, bro, this, this town is so small. I've been there one time because my stepdad's from there. And uh, we went there, man, that there was literally, like, we went to this burger spot, right? This bird, I can't even describe it. You would think this place is literally like an abandoned building. Wow! And it's like a They're small little. Food in hut. There. And it's like if if it was like 1930, that place would have been popping. There. Oh wow! Or maybe even like the night the 1980s. Or yeah, something. yeah. You know, there'd be the girls skating and stuff like that. It, oh wow! It probably flourished at one time. <laughs> you know what I mean? They got the little bulb signs and stuff. With and, that, and that's Monahan's, right? Yeah. That's what you're talking about? Okay. There's this place that they, they're just cooking burgers. Like, they had the fire, like... I bet they were good, though. Smash burgers, they good? bro. Yes. They're <laughs> they incredible. So, that, Monahan's is... We about to go give them... Okay. So, All right. Man. September 28th, going to be back in Tennessee. Sparta, Tennessee. Get ready, yeah. Sparta. Sparta, let's go. Uh, November 22nd, Milford, Ohio. Okay. And then May 23rd, you're going to be back at, at, in El Paso. It says May 23rd in quotes 2025. What does that mean? Okay, t- 2025 in May. Oh, that's oh, that's yeah, the yeah, next year. Two, yeah, two, yeah, I, I see. Yeah, I was yeah. like, why is there quotes? Yeah. Uh, Jessa, do you have a uh, another question for somebody? I have two more questions. Okay, let's do it. What is your favorite song you've ever written? Oh, man. Oh, I would probably say Heaven Bound. Heaven Bound is my favorite out- song um, just due to the fact that I was in a very dark place when I wrote the song because my mom just passed away. Mm-hmm. And I knew that I wanted to go um, to be in heaven with her and I had hopes that she was in heaven too. And, you know, that's when we came up with the whole album Heaven Bound. But the song Heaven Bound, when we dropped that thing, we knew that this thing was so good. That I literally sat on the song for like for like seven months because I didn't I didn't know when to release it. I it, it sounded so good that I just wanted to do it right and release it in the right timing. But it was just that song was just so good to me. I love that song. It's f- forever a banger. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. And then this is a hard one. Who is your favorite singing partner? Singing partner like rapper? Like, yeah. Featured, so do you like with you in the song? Oh, um. Ah oh, man, uh, you, you're gonna get me in trouble on this one. Yeah, you're gonna get me in trouble. Um, <laughs> he's 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 pleading the fifth right now. <laughs> right. I think they're all good, yeah. man. They're all good. They're all so yeah, good. Yeah, that's a tough question to answer. You you said it. It was gonna be hard. So yeah, that one. Was you're right. <laughs> was that an Ainsley question or your question? That was B. Because <laughs> I was thinking he was gonna say bring, Rob. Bringing the tough questions. All right. All right. Now, who else do you? Uh, oh, it's definitely up there, though. Who else do you do concert tours with? Um, really, just me. You know, I do the most events with probably uh, Rare Breed. Clean. So, these, so this the schedule we just read is not all Rare Breed. It's not all Rare Breed. No. This is this, this is just is you, just me. He okay, does. cool, perfect. Yeah, this right. is just me. But we we Rare Breed will be at some events. Um, at three of the events. Gotcha. So we got Sparta with Rare Breed. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. And then we got some probably with Drew Ava, Young, okay. young or not Drew Ava, uh, Joe Nestor. Okay. Um, you, have you heard of him? Yep. Check him out. He's dope. Uh, we got Redeemed. He's an up and coming artist. Super dope. And then we also got uh, Young Bro. Did I already say that? Yes, I think so. Young Bro. So now, do you, at all these, you have somebody else playing with you? 
before yeah. you opening up for you yeah, opening up or going after me like i'm at the place where it, when it comes to the ministry if they want me to close and do altar call of course i'm gonna go do it but sometimes um you know it's okay to go first you know a lot of people leave they're at the you're the last sh- last person up or fall asleep like Gemma. For real. Gemma fell asleep and we had to leave. Her little, her little her little sister fell asleep and so yeah. we got to see your full show, but yeah. uh, we went towards the end of of yeah. Rob. We had to leave. You know what I mean? Asleep. And and it's it's a bummer to have people leave during your set. So you know if 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 I can go when everybody's up there, it gives me more of an opportunity. I'm not gonna change my set just because it's not an altar call moment. Like I still give do some deep songs and and speak from my heart because somebody can get saved at any time, anywhere, you know, whether it's in the like middle of my set and middle of the whole event. Oh yeah. The Holy Spirit can drop anytime. Anytime. Yeah. And so, um, I, 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 I'm grateful to go first. And before I messed up my leg, but I'll go first because I, I, and I'll wear people out, you know, I'm up there turning up, getting everybody singing along with me you know what i mean so if you, if you follow if you follow asap if ever move for move at a concert you got a good cardio workout in. for real for real <laughs> yeah you already, i remember yeah okay so you are you tore your meniscus yeah I tore my meniscus so yeah everybody, at a concert like working out i mean basketball oh yeah bending over getting a hot dog i don't know dude i just kidding it could have been no it's just basketball but i'm getting old guys bro wait till you get my age no. You will pull a hamstring while yeah, you're sleeping. Wait, wait. Yeah. While you're sleeping. He woke up. No way. Dude, my, I scared the crud out of my wife um, one night. I jumped out of bed. I mean, literally. I literally, like, floated. I just, like, horizontally jumped out of bed. And, I mean, I felt the pop. And I'm sitting there. I, th- I didn't know it was pulled. I thought it was just, you know, like a charty horse. Mm. Man, within three days, dude, my whole, my whole back hamstring was just black and blue. So while you're sleeping, bro, wow. So just wait, just wait. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> I'm old. I'm old. I sprained both ankles within three months. Wow. Yeah, she may have my injury prone. Uh, yeah. DNA or whatever. Yeah. This one was the first degree sprain, and this one was the second degree. She, she plays club volleyball, and so she, her, uh, she, she, she tore, rolled her ankles twice this year. Yeah. So, is you, it- do you, what, you, what sports do you play? Uh, I, I, I did like basketball never will play again. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, sports, um, I'm not really into playing sports to be honest with you. Um, I'll play some golf. Maybe I'll go out and golf. You know? Yeah. Cause I noticed in the documentary, you didn't really like, you know, yeah, I played basketball. Like. I played, uh, the s- soccer, obviously when I was a little kid. Um, and then I played football as well, but you know, do you like I really to watch like just to watch now? Yeah, okay. I just love to watch. Who are your favorite teams? Uh, obviously Dallas Mavericks, Dallas Cowboys. Um, Boo. UFC. I love, I love UFC. Pittsburgh Steelers fans. So. I know, I know. You get it, tell. <laughs> Where? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 right there, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Steelers, yep. Steelers, Steelers. Um, why? <laughs> you know, whenever I was young. My brother was about a year and a half younger than me. Mm. And my mom, for some reason, dressed us alike, like we were twins or something. Mm. And I hated that. No one wants to, no older brother wants to be dressed exactly like their younger brother. And so I asked her, I said, do I have to dress all the time like Joe Lon? And she said, why? And I said, well, I mean, okay, if you want to do the school, that's fine. But can I, do I have to pick the same team as him? Mm. She would dress us in Dallas Cowboy stuff all the time. She lived here in Dallas. Yeah. And she says, no, pick another team. And so, Back way back then, the sports stores sold every team. Mm. They didn't sell just the local teams. So I would always, she said, even at two and three, I would always just migrate towards the black and gold of the Steelers. Cool. So, and, you know, in the 70s, they were in the Super Bowl all the time. So they nice. won four that year. So I just picked them because they were always on TV. Yeah. Just in you know? the 70s. Well, just. That, that's a legit, it wasn't even about the playing or really at that time. You just cared about the colors and. When I, to be honest, I was a bandwagon a fan of the Cowboys. Yeah. I didn't like the Cowboys, to be honest, and didn't care. I cared less about the Cowboys until 2016, when Tony Romo it was like the year before or or something. His last one, he was and Des Bryant caught it. <laughs> that that's when that was the year that I thought we were going to the Super Bowl, and I became a fan, a bandwagon fan. And ever since then, I've just been watching Cowboys ever since then. Honestly. 
I don't really like football. The only reason I like I like the Cowboys is because he likes the Steelers. Oh, really? I do, it has to be like, the opposite. Do you like cheer real hard for the Cowboys, like when they're playing each other? She'll she'll cheer when they score, just because she knows it gets under my skin. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you like UFC, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, who's your favorite? Uh, you know, some of your yeah. favorite US, UFC fighters. Max Holloway, um, uh, Volkanovski. I don't know if anybody that's in prison right now knows any of these fighters because that's all like I don't know what they get these type of. They don't get pay per views, yeah, but yeah. they'll. You know, there's a lot of uh, the fight nights and yeah. uh, some of the ones that are on ESPN. The prelims. Yeah. Uh, most of the prelims are on. Oh, cool. So. Cool. So, so they'll know who who the big fights are. Oh, yeah. yeah, so um yeah, Volkanovski, um everybody, I mean Conor McGregor. Um everybody knows Conor yeah, McGregor. Yeah, for real. I don't. <laughs> you don't. No. Uh I'm surprised. That's the biggest fighter in the UFC, right? I'm more of a WWE. Yeah. Oh, WWE. Yeah, she likes she likes the, He's well, the WWE spokesperson of the ufc <laughs> yeah. pretty much true true that so uh she likes she likes wwe in that style because she got to meet uh sting oh wow so sting hosted our he narrated our documentary so did, we, y'all, did you notice in my documentary when i was talking about the kids i was hanging out with i was i was sting for my birthday yep i saw yeah. that really yep. yeah i was sting <laughs> as a little i was a little kid i'll show you that part yeah, I like Sting. Yeah, I was Sting. My I loved Goldberg back then. Bill Goldberg was my boy. I, Bill Goldberg, beast. <laughs> Nobody messing with Bill Goldberg when he first came out, right? Do you remember? That's true. That. That's true. That's true. And so, yeah, I, I was, I was, I, 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 back in the day, I really liked wrestling. We do too. We went uh, a couple years ago. Yeah, we went to a Monday Night Raw. We went to a Monday Night Raw. Nice. Was that cool? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was cool. This we we cool. sat right by like. One of the stage entries. Yeah. So the fireworks were so loud. And so, I was like younger. I was like she was, six. Yeah, she was a few years younger. And the, the fireworks were so loud. So when they came in, it was a little uncomfortable because we were so close to them. But but it was still fun. She she had fun. It was fun, yeah. It was really fun. That's awesome. So um, I want to know about some of your songs because we're going to play some of the videos. We played three or four of the videos on the last one. Yeah. Um, uh, Jessa. Jessa. What is your favorite? What's your favorite uh, song? My current favorite is War Ready. War Ready. Because to me, it just like sticks in my head. Sometimes in school, I'll just be like. (laughs) (laughs) Now, so what about War Ready? You know, you do that with Rob and who else? Nikki Gracious. And so, uh, so how did y'all come up? Whose idea was it that came up with that song? Yeah. How did y'all write it? What's, what does it mean? What does it mean to be War Ready? So at that time, I was just so like fed up with this COVID agenda, you know, still don't like what they're doing in the government. So I'm always going to stand by, like, I don't trust the government type of stuff. They're mandating all these COVID vaccines to everybody. And I am just like, man, I'm doing whatever, I'll do whatever it takes to not take this vaccine and, and, and not have them force any of this the stuff in my body or like I, I was like, you know what? I, I'm war ready. Like I'm willing to like die for this. You know, because that you never know what what's in that stuff that they're right. putting in your body. Like it could be like nanotechnology. I it I, it got deep where with where my mind was going with this stuff. And so I was like, you know, I came up with that song that I was like, you know what? I, I I'm I'm war ready for this. And then I hit up Nikki and I hit up Rare Breed and they're like, oh yeah, we hopping on this thing right away. <laughs> it was a really good ride right over to them. I had the open verses and they jumped on it and they had it, they had it over within a couple of days. And we, we, I, I knew it was a good song, but I didn't know it was going to take off like it did. Yeah. And it, it, it went out there for real, for real. Now there's another militaristic type song called uh, Militant. Yeah. All right. That's so- like war ready, but on steroids. I know. <laughs> right no which one was first a war ready okay and the yeah. militant came out after yeah. that and I, and I i tried to get rare breed on militant yeah i did i i said bro get on this one he's like right now i'm not doing any music because i'm going about to go on tour and stuff so uh yeah, he he like recently i don't did. think i've showed you militant you probably like militant yeah a militant. <laughs> dude that one just so much adrenaline so much yeah. adrenaline in that uh in that video it's pretty cool it's pretty cool I think 
it's time to get military. Flavor be homophobic, cause sex is so boring Legalistic, morbid, it's all the same to be LGBTQ Left we get feminists, be a lemma Great on demolishing nuclear family units and planets Seeds of confusion invading our public schools and degrading The straight five bounds of America, equal to equality Ends up supporting my beliefs, and the hatred in politics First and second amendment to rise until they apply the left All that's left is democracy, mark the government copper check Communism is popping next, but we're giving TikTok and gender dysphoria topic that flood endorphins and block the importance of warning God's elect that is war when it's obvious And I can't leave no soldier stranded This guerrilla mortal combat Where there ain't no comeback Steam is gonna let you have it I tell you the Jesus to answer To all of our problems You don't wanna listen If you don't want the Christian To go Kanye on y'all Better let me finish Everything is backwards and tied out Don't bring that darkness in my house Got Lucifer's army They put a target on me For taking the garbage out Women wanna be men And men wanna be women Man, that's a demon I'm praying against the prince of the air And ain't no retreating Hey, sap out front with a military mix I march you march for marksmanship Got marquees name up in the marquee And they shooting at us But I got your six Men, what y'all playing? Round for this ain't no round war. The battles in the air against Satan. I won't lay down for him. They conscious, they speak to us like we the ones needing to be abolished. We read, so we acknowledge the evil they bring upon us. I'm here to tell you that Jesus not bringing peace, but his armies. I'm a son. Can't let them touch my kids. Hey, cause of Pride Month, a lot of Christians be silent. They try to censor me, but that won't keep me quiet. I'll never take the jab. I ain't scared of no virus. I die for this. The world lost, only Jesus can help us. We don't listen what the media tell us. They ain't gay, but when you tell the truth, straight out. Yeah, I think it's time to get military. The church let it slide for too long. I think it's time to get military. I'm tired and sick of seeing what the times are we living in. I think it's time to get military. The church let it slide for too long. I think it's time to get military. So I want to talk about the, the club because that song, when you start posting clips of it on yeah. social media, and by the way, if, you, if you're if you out here, when you get out of prison and you're out here already, follow him on Instagram. Yeah. We'll put all the links up there. Are you just on Instagram or anything else? Uh, yeah, everything. Facebook, you Facebook YouTube, YouTube, Twitter, yeah, all that. Not Twitter, really. Twitter. I'm not on not Twitter anymore either. I'm on Twitter. Yeah. I still have an account, but I have TikTok. a post. TikTok. Yeah. Okay. All right. So look him up. Um, but... Um, the club, the club really means a lot to me because I mean, that was, I went to prison for five DWIs and, uh, I did a lot of the drugs too, but, uh, honestly, Jack Daniels was, was my first, you know, yeah. mind altering drug, uh, love my first mind altering love. So whenever I was tweaking on meth or something, I couldn't taste Jack Daniels. And I drank it for the taste. Mm. So honestly, the first time I ever tried meth, I was up for three days, but I loved it. And I, I found my new drug, but then I, I I took a drink of my Jack and Diet Coke and I couldn't taste the Jack. 
and somebody said, well, you put, you put a lot in there. And from that point on, I never did meth again. Mm. So Jack, Jack saved me from getting strung out on meth. I know that sounds weird, but, um, but you know, I, Jack had a deep love relationship with Jack Daniels. Yeah. No homo. Yeah. yeah right. And, uh, you know, like tell people I, I majored in Jack Daniels at college, you know, a lot of late night, late night classes, you got know, it like, tattooed on his arm, got a tattoo on my arm, all that stuff. And so it's a so, fresh tattoo. We just got it last week. <laughs> like still, still thinking about him. So, uh, so talk about that song and what, what was the idea? I mean, obviously the, the lyrics are self-explanatory, but, uh, talk about what, why you wrote it. Yeah. What was the, you know, reason why you wrote it. And, um, it's, it's a, it's a really good song, bro. I want to say thank, thank you, you for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, when I first came up with that song, man, I was just in a place where I wanted to reach people and let them know that, you know, that, that they, they can't find that, that peace and that love, you know, in the, in the club or at the bar or in the party life, you know, we, we, we tend to try to run to these things that give us a temporary peace, but, you know, it, it never really holds up. It never fills that void inside of our hearts. And so when I came up with that song, I wanted to let people know that, you know, that you can, you can, you find peace in, in Jesus Christ. Like if somebody was just to try him out, you know, try Christ out, you know, they, they could really find that, that true joy and purpose in their life that it's not about like partying or anything. Like tr to be honest, we party hard for for jesus you yeah, know what i absolutely. mean absolutely and it, i tell people i still get drunk i just switch bartenders yeah for real <laughs> <laughs> i mean because i don't i don't think they have no idea god good shouldn't get any less of our personality of our fun of our everything than the devil did yeah you know and so yeah i, I definitely made that song to just let people know that hey you know um we we have fun as christians as well and that you ain't got to find Find, try to find that temporary peace outside of Christ because he he can fill you. And when you drink from him, you'll never thirst again. You know, so good. Who who makes who makes all your videos? Uh, I do. I I film all my videos and uh, well, I don't film every one of them because obviously I'm not like yeah. My yeah, wife, my wife, and then I have she, some other. She videos. does. Yeah, wow, my, my wife I'm does the majority of them. Tell yeah. her I am impressed, She's man. Limit. She yeah, holds the some, gimbal and yeah, everything. Yeah, there's some good angles and good movement. Yeah. I'm impressed. Thank you. All right. Yeah, she'd be killing. You got game. Yeah, shout out. Shout out, baby. You know, come <laughs> tell, tell us about tell us about your family. Yeah, so I'm married. I I, I we're going we we just hit 13 years. Congratulations. Thank you. In April, April 30th. Okay, ours is April 2. We just hit we just hit 16. Oh, really? Oh, sweet. And so I have four kids. I have one little girl. Um she's 5. I have a 7-year-old son a 12 year old little girl, a girl, and then a 15 year old girl. And so we were pretty, we're pretty, uh, you know, we were busy for a while. I think we're <laughs> done though, but we have, we have a big family. We have two dogs. Wow. We just lost one of our dogs, but we, oh, uh, we got a new that one. Man, yeah. uh, but but we, we have a, we have a big family. So it's, it's sometimes it's hard to, uh, so grateful for Airbnbs nowadays. So you know what I mean? Like this, you get, you get, three bedroom houses now for hotel prices. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean, it's just, it's way better. And than, does your family travel with you yeah, at all? They, like they in travel, summer? Yeah. They, they, we only bring them along to places that I could kind of drive around nine hours. You know, I don't want them in the car for 15, 14 hours, or I don't even want to be in the car for that long. Give me a flight. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm willing to drive if I have to like nine hours max uh for the fam and maybe but when we go to sparta tennessee i'm bringing them all and we're gonna drive like i don't know how long that is probably nine hours but uh, I, it's gotta be more well i don't know i drove to alabama for prison and it was nine and a half hours okay that's a little more uh east, east yeah so tennessee would be a little more so i don't know maybe maybe yeah maybe there's a highway that goes straight there and it'll be a little bit quicker but yeah we're ready for that I'm, drive I'm, I'm setting up a um talking to a lady, the daughter of an inmate from Alabama works security at one of the prisons in Tennessee. Mm. And I'm talking with her right now to come up there to minister in Tennessee. Oh, that'd be cool. So I, I've seen uh, something on social media. You were at the uh, a Florida prison. Yeah. How often do you go into prisons and do you want to go in more? Yeah, I definitely want to go in. Uh, that was my first time actually. Okay. My first and only time of me going actually back to jail from jail. 
uh it was the the one of the best experiences i've ever had in my life you guys in prison um bless me without even knowing it just having me just be there to let you guys know that how that i ain't forgot about you that i love you and that i care for you and then to see the impact that it has on you guys really just changed my heart made me want to go in there and love on you guys more um i started to reach out to a lot of people at my church my pastors and stuff about um what can i do about prison ministry for the church what can i set up and and be involved in here and, and they're prison. huge they're huge in a yeah. prison ministry gateway there's going to be lots of opportunity yeah so we 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 we're, we're getting my my uh training and stuff done right now so i got some training when i get back i think next week or the week after to do some t uh tcc is that what it is tcc yeah tdc or something tcj yeah tdc J. yeah that's it TDCJ. yeah, yeah tdcj and so we're going to do some stuff out there. I already talked to some chaplains. I'm really eager to start doing this prison ministry because I just realized how far hope I remember it. When I went out there to the Everglades in, in Miami, Florida, it made me re uh, remember that how far a little bit of hope went for me yeah. in jail. So good, and I rem I saw it's, I started seeing people walking around, and I started just to rem it started to, to make me think about like when I was locked up, and it made me real sad inside. And it, mm -hmm. I remember, um, having a lot of people just kind of just telling me, "Oh, you're gonna be locked up in here forever," type of thing. It was nothing but negativity mm -hmm. of the people that I was surrounded by, but I just knew that I could just hold on to the small mustard seed of faith. And and God would give me um, the mustard seed of faith that got me eventually all the way out to where I'm out of out of jail, right? But I I realized that these little mustards, if I could have had somebody like me mm -hmm. in there to just tell just tell me that I love you, I care about you, let's pray. You know, we here to lock arms with you. I could have it could have been a lot easier for for me, but I didn't have that. Yeah. And so knowing what it what. Um, what it d does to these people in prison it really makes me want to just go in there and love on them let them know that hey i ain't forgot about you hey and there's purpose in here you know you not not just to get you to where you are ready to get out but like you know there there's ministry to be done yeah. inside this he's got assignments for him while they're still yeah, in there. assignments like god's wanting to work on your heart there, there's people in there that need salvation and you can you can be the inmate to lead them to Christ, you know, not just getting your own life together. See, when I went to jail after knowing God, um, I, I turned myself in and I was already forgiven. Um, the day I turned myself in, the the the, the system didn't forgive me, yeah. but I went in there saved. And so when I went in there, I was like, okay, what do you want me to do in here? You know, because you can receive salvation. You don't have to continue to be like, man, just be, and having the mindset of being a criminal while being in jail, you don't have to have that mindset. So, like, my state. So, like, you know, when you go, when you, if you can accept Jesus Christ in your heart at that point, then you'd be like, okay, now it's time to, now it's time to, uh, uh, to be on this mission, yeah. whatever you wanted me to do in here, whether it lead many people to Christ, it, it could be a pedophile that you want to be le to lead to Jesus. Amen. You know, and shoot, they need Jesus Amen. a lot. You know what I mean? Um, it could be a, a murderer that's dealing with anger and you can show them the, the love of Christ that would make them not want to be, have that anger in their hearts anymore. There's just things that you could be doing in your cell that could really just be, um, uh, uh, you know, through, through conversation, the Holy spirit and fellowship and with these other inmates that you could, you could be really impacting people's lives right there in the cell. So. I think it's a beautiful ministry of someone yeah. being in jail and incarcerated, even though the world says that they're a criminal, the world says that they're a felon, but God says, you know, you're my child. And, you know, I, I can't trust a lot of, I can't trust everybody with this plan and this purpose that I have for you, but I trust you and, and, and I, I believe in you to do the right thing in there. That's so good. Yeah. That's so good. So, um, you show in the documentary that you started, you know, writing and rapping at a very young age. Yeah. So who are some, um, who are some people that, uh, influenced your style, yeah. writing style and your rapping style? Who are some influences in your life that really spoke to you to, to be able to rap the way you do and write the way you do? 
Will the real Slim Shady please stand up? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think he influenced us all. We all wanted to be Slim Shady, right. didn't we? <laughs> no, uh, when I first, obviously, if you go in the documentary, I started rapping after Eight Mile came out. I felt like it was cool. It made me feel cool. I was already hanging out with the cool kids, and I just wanted to rap. I felt like, you know, this was cool for me. Um, but over time, I started to listen to a lot of Chameleon Air, um, uh, Swish a House, T.I., Lil Flip, um, Young Jeezy, um, people like that. So, like, all all of them kind of, like, you know, made made my, like, Chameleon Air more than anything, yeah, yeah, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Chameleon Air, he really impacted my lyricism and, and helped me learn what multi-syllable rhymes were and yeah. stuff like that. And so... Shout out to Chameleon Air. And, and what's cool about Chameleon Air is that, you know, he stopped cussing in his raps too. It, over, over like a while, like, you know, when I was starting to do it, when I started coming to Christ, he didn't like, you know, change to be a Christian or anything, but like, you know, he, he stopped cussing in his raps. I thought that was really cool. That is cool. Chester, do you have a, uh, do you have another question? Anything from um, what we've been talking about? Just things off, off the top of your head? Uh, let me see. While she's thinking of something, go cool. pick up that top, pick up that top thing right there. Yeah. This one? And read read a joke. We always do dad jokes, so read a joke. Okay. Knock knock. Who's there? A broken pencil. A broken pencil who? <laughs> Never mind. It's pointless. You did you did that really good, dude. You did that really good. Like it acting, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Wait, wait, is there another one on there? Ready? Why was the cat so small? Why was the cat so small? Yeah. Why? It only drank condensed milk. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't heard these ones. We we know a lot of them, but I haven't heard that one. Uh, that's good. Is there another one on there? It's usually three. Did you hear about the cheese that lost the race? Jeez, I love being heard these. It fell at the final curdle. <laughs> Dude, these, they bought me these for, when did you buy them? Christmas? Christmas. And I obviously read that one side that says embarrassing, embarrassing dad jokes or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, we always like to throw a little joy. Yeah, that's cool. Joy in there because the joy of the Lord is our what, Jessa? Strength. Hey, that's right. Okay. That's right. This one is right. is one that I thought was really like different and really cool. Okay. Do you like making or do you like recording music videos or making your songs? Like actually, like recording them for the last time that's gonna go out better. Songs. You do? Yeah, I love recording songs more. Putting the videos together is so draining. <laughs> The song's the fun part, you know? You get to just flow and have a good time. When it comes to the videos, you got to get out there, film. It could be hot. Somebody might not be filming good. You do a lot of filming out in the yeah. fields, man. Yeah, like, I don't know what time of year those are. but Yeah, and so it, it the editing's fun. The editing, the videos. You do it all yourself, your yeah. wife? Or? Yeah, I edit all the videos. But just the filming and the procrastination it takes to actually just go out and do it. You know what I mean? Like, we could talk about I could come up with the most craziest idea, like, oh, yeah. I'll write it down just like I did with my documentary, and then it'll never come out because I'd just be like, man, that's a lot of work. You know what I mean? And and sometimes when I uh, – and I shouldn't allow it to do that, but, like, sometimes when I put, like, a lot of effort into something, it doesn't do very good. And sometimes the most easiest things that I go out and film wow. do the best. Wow. And so it's like, uh, I don't even know what to do. You know what I mean? So I'm you uh I'm more of a speaker, so I'll go speak at places. Um and I'm not a typical pastor where I have three points and uh, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. But when I'm sharing my story, I I will try to just spend time preparing. And more often than not, I'll get on stage and get it all. Better, no Holy Spirit oh. to say, I want to go a different route. Oh, okay. I'm like, well, why did I even prepare? So <laughs> yeah. now I'm like, now I'm like, okay, I'm not going to prepare Holy Spirit. Watch God been <laughs> saying the whole time. That was for you. I guess something else for somebody else. You know what I mean? And that's how it works sometimes. How long you been writing and putting out music? 
since I was 14. I, I see, I see like on, if you go on Apple Music, I mean, there's things from 2014, 15. Yeah. I don't know how far back it goes on Apple Music, but uh, okay, all right. Oh, so um, that's that's I'm talking about like I just I started making music when I was 14. Yeah, I started releasing music, releasing music, yeah, in 2016. Okay, yeah, so in 2016 is when I I stepped out and said, you know what? I'm done tattooing. I want to do. I want to do things that glorify God. And because uh, He told me when I was tattooing, you know, if you if you do things that glorify Me, I'll provide for your family forever. So good. Uh, because I was struggling financially. I had a spirit of I had like curse of poverty all over my life, all my life. Wow. I never had it really anything. You know, I I, I would. There were, there were so many times I wasn't, I, my testimony wasn't like I was a huge drug de dealer and had millions of dollars and I touched all that type of money. No, like I was in the streets, like struggling, you know what I mean? Like hopeless. And so like when I, when I, I never really had a good, I never could keep a job either. Wow. And so like, you know, when me, me stepping out of, and I felt like tattooing was like a, a great opportunity for me to actually have a job and keep a job. Right or like a job that could be stable, but even that wasn't really stable. And so like, you know, when I gave up tattooing and, and, and I was like, he's like, do things that glorify me. I didn't know what that meant. All I knew is that uh, I just wanted to go back to doing music again and start doing these videos and shoot. God kept his word. When'd you get your first tattoo and when have you gotten your last tattoo? Okay. So I respected my mom, even though, uh, like I could have, I could have done anything, you know, I, I disrespect her in so many other ways, but I respected her this one time. Don't get a tattoo until you're 18. And I didn't get my first tattoo and it's right here. And it says Chigga man. Cause that's okay, who yeah. it was. And, yeah. You, yeah, re you referenced man. that in your uh, yeah. documentary. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then what's the latest one you've gotten? The latest one is this little wave right here on my ring finger that I got in Hawaii. Um, uh, probably like three or four years ago okay yeah so it was that's the that's the latest one and before that it was graceland on my face okay here. talk about uh the ones on your face tattoos and what they mean to you so um you know i wasn't really convicted for getting tattoos that much um you know there were times where i was like dang did i go too far you know and i looked at myself in the mirror and i would feel convicted that way but that was because I, I was changing so fast and I looked different so quick. You know what I mean? I was like, whoa, what's, you know, I'd have a little epiphanies here and there. But, you know, I uh, found myself when I would get my face tattoos, they'd be very therapeutic to me for some yeah. reason. Like they didn't hurt at all. They wow. felt good. Um, and I don't recommend anybody to get just a, a gang load of tats and yeah. stuff, but. Like, don't go post Malone or anything. Yeah, like don't go post Malone like I did. But, you know, I was in the tattoo scene, and I thought I was going to be doing this forever. So uh, might as well get tats, right? Yeah. And I was also in the streets. All my partners was just tatted up. That was a cool thing to do was tat, tat, tat it up. You know what I mean? But this crown right here is one of the most uh, best tattoos that I have um, on my face because I was dealing with my i was dealing with my um my walk with christ it was, it was i was struggling and i kept on falling in a certain area and and it was um you know i was dealing with my struggles and god said you know i keep i keep giving you a crown of victory right and you keep on walking in victory right and that's what it is right next to it is the Chinese letters, right? Oh, okay, gotcha. Victory, and then this is the crown. He said, "I keep on giving you a crown, but you keep on giving it away." Wow. The enemy is not taking it from you, because all you have to do is hold on to it and just deny him when when um when when he's trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like wow, you said something there, man. Wow. It's good. And so I was giving away my crown of victory when it came to my just my sobriety, whether, whether it be um, my victory when when it came to uh, being delivered from something or whatever it was. And I kept on falling back into it. He's like, you kept on giving your crown of victory away. All you have to do is hold on to it. And so I look at now when I look in the mirror and I, I see it, 
you know, it sometimes reminds me to hold on to my crown. That's so good. You know, in, in the spiritual realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, in closing here, man, we're, we got your concerts coming up. What can people expect from you, uh, you know, with an injury, uh, not as acrobatic as you, or as you used to be in, so? Backflips. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're we about to do cartwheels galore. You know, I'm gonna be crowd surfing. Nah, uh, we <laughs> crowd surfing is probably uh, the safe yeah, way to go with a knee injury. Go, right? I thought you were gonna do that. The other one, I was like, really? Is he gonna crowd surf on me? He's <laughs> six three. No, that would have been hilarious. Uh, the thoughts that these kids are having while is he gonna jump on me, dude? You should just like, I don't know if you probably ever have like start at the back and just like act like you're running, yeah. And, uh, watch them. everybody just spread. <laughs> I hit straight floor. That's what I would always be afraid of. If, if I if I decided to jump into the crowd, they're like, I'd be like, no, they don't want it. They, they're not gonna catch me, they're not gonna catch me at all, right? So, no, but uh, you know, it's the same thing, you know, I may not be turning up as crazy as I usually go, but. You know, there's gonna be lives changed. The Holy Spirit's gonna move and move wherever he, he, uh, he sees fit. So it's it's gonna be great, you know. And it's not always about music and turning up with people. It's about th- things I have to say. Yeah. You know that that can really impact somebody. Amen. You know, because yeah, the music is going on, but people are mostly bobbing to the beat. But once you actually say what's like the Holy Spirit saying on your heart, without the music then that's when you can penetrate and be like, look, yes. and you can say it the way you want it to say it too. Like if there's something that's really heavy on your heart, you could take time into and try to embed that in somebody's heart and mind so that they leave with knowing that this is what God said, or this is like the direction God's wanted me to do. I need to let some things go, you know? So it, I, I love just preaching. I love just yeah. going up there and just talking and stuff like that. That's good. Cool. That's good. Yeah. We, de- we definitely enjoyed that part. Uh, as well at the at the other concert, Gemma was just sleeping, but, uh, but we enjoyed that part. So, uh, all right, and listen, if you're in the Dallas area, yeah. uh, Waco June nineteenth, Plano June twentieth, Bastrop June uh, June eighteenth, uh, yeah. And uh, I'll put a I'll put a picture of the schedule up there, so that way wherever you are, uh, I don't know if you you know Pando's in like f- almost forty something states and yeah. going to be in more states. So so there's going to be a lot of people that uh, will be able to come to these states yeah. that you uh, that you are in. Um, you're on Pando now, and uh, you're getting lots of views. So uh, you have the you have a captive audience, uh, pun intended. Yeah. But uh, talk to the camera. Talk to those men and women behind bars. Yeah. We are also on a on a separate tablet company that uh worthy people and real vita aren't on just yet i'm sure they will be eventually yeah. but these are all just straight county jails smaller county jails cool. um and so uh we're on probably a thousand of those across the across the nation so these are people that are waiting you've been in county you didn't get to, you didn't go to yeah, prison yeah, yeah. these are people that are sitting right where you were so speak to man get just give them tell them whatever yeah okay Man, uh, I'm super grateful that you even got to this point in the podcast. You know, um, you know, I, I know what it feels like to be f- feeling like you're forgotten about in jail. But, you know, sometimes God allows us to go back to our vomit to realize how disgusting it is and how messed up we, or how much we need him. And maybe God has you right where you're, you're at right now just to remind you that, hey, you know what, the, the life that you're going, I'm giving you another chance to be honest, because you could have died. You could have, you could have, um, you know, not woken up in some way or some, some, he's trying to get your attention. That's what I'm trying to say is God is trying to give your attention. And at these times, open up that word, open up that Bible, read as much as you can, because the enemy out here, like in the free world, it really, uh, the enemy really be just trying to deceive so many people out here. And you already know it got you to the place where you're locked up right now. You probably, probably, if you really did your crime, then you probably were deceived in some way to get you where you're at right now. And the enemy tricked you and he got you. But sometimes God allows the enemy to come in, um, in certain ways. And then, you know, the whole, the, the enemy maybe been used, but God put you there for a reason. And that reason may just because he wants to spend some time with you. So allow allow God to come into your heart and allow Jesus to fix some things up because if you try to keep trying to do it over and over on your own, you're gonna get yourself back in there. 
and you're going to go back to the streets and, and you're just going to break hearts. You're going to break your own heart. You're going to break God's heart. And God wants to use you. There's so much more joy in Christ and being sober. And uh, you should try it. Um, I'm telling you, um, you, you may not understand what that looks like on how that feels. But if you would be willing to just allow God in your heart and, and, and change you inside and, and allow that Holy Spirit in you, he'll give you a hope and a peace that you won't find anywhere else. Um, I was talking um, to my brother. If you would like to write me, um, I also will, will put the his P.O. box down in, in the description. He'll give you the P.O. box. If y'all want to write me, I will come out here to Waxahachie and uh, pick up the, the letters. I may not be able to respond to every single one of them, but if you've watched my documentary and you're like, man, I want to tell you how it changed my life, um, but it, I may not be able to respond to every single one of them, but I, I will definitely, if God leads me to responding to them, if I have time, I definitely will, but I would, I will read every single one of them that you send me. And, uh, and if it's a letter of encouragement, if it's uh, anything that you, any little cool stuff that y'all be making him like this type of stuff send it my boy because I want to put it up in the studio there you go nah, but uh, God bless you guys I, I can't wait to come see y'all I don't hopefully if you, if you watch this and you're like man and you see me come to your prison one day come come holler at me you know what I mean because that'd be really cool you're like man I watched that, that podcast and right. it ministered to me so that'd be really cool but I love you guys Amen. All right. Well, um, you know, one of the one of the options they have on every video they watch, uh, there's a, there's an option to hit accept Christ. Yeah, accept Christ. And so, um, you know, we've had over I think I think twenty five twenty five hundred accept Christ in the last ten months, and uh, we just think that's the most important number. Yeah. You know, and so um, me and Jessa always pray at the end of every every episode, and so I, we would, we would love for you to be able to join us in prayer. And so what, uh, what I'll do is I just say, I say a simple prayer and, um, and then I'll have you and, uh, you and Jessa just repeat after me. And then they will say, you guys will say the part that, that ASAP and, uh, and Jessa will say, so you ready? Father in Jesus name, father in Jesus name, by your spirit, by your spirit. I confess, I confess that I'm a sinner. That I'm a sinner, and I need a savior. I need a savior. And I confess with my mouth. And I confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart. And I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, died on the cross, died on the cross for my sins, for my sins. Rose again, rose again on the third day, on the third day. And now is sitting in heaven, and now is sitting in heaven. Your right side, God. Your right side, God. And I ask you into my heart. And I ask you into my heart. Take my old heart. Take my old. Give me a new heart. A new heart. And live in my heart and live in my heart as Lord and Savior as Lord and Savior and today I changed my mind and today I changed my mind my people my people places my places and my things and my things and I serve you Jesus I serve you Jesus and everything I do and everything that I say and say reflects your glory reflects your glory come into my life come into my life and change me in Jesus name in Jesus mighty name amen amen and listen don't all don't just push that button Push the button, but then write us and let us know that yeah. you got saved either by his documentary. He, he yeah. needs to know that too. Write us and let us know if that documentary changed your life yeah. to the point of salvation. Um, but then also if, if, it, if it changed your life by today. And uh, But then also, if that's your first time, Pando has some great videos down there called Fresh Start. And get in there and start reading them because today was the moment of salvation for you. Now you need the journey of salvation for you, okay? And the journey of learning more how to read the Bible, how to stay in community, how to hold yourself accountable, how to hold, you know, let others hold you accountable. And uh, community, community is the key, right? Yeah. Gang member, gangs know this because their communities are tight. Yeah. And but for some reason, when we give our heart to the Lord, the devil tries to get us to isolate, get us alone. And so stay in community, go to chapel, go to rec, go to everything and be around other believers. So uh, thank you so much for coming out, dude. Yeah, for thank sure. you for uh, hanging out with me and my daughter. Yeah. And uh, we love you and we'll see you. Uh, I love you too. We'll, we'll see you next, uh, next uh, not next week. Yeah, but the week after. Yeah, the week yep. after, man. Yep. All right, you ready, Jessa? Let's yep. get it. All right, later. Oh, don't forget, don't let your background hold you back. Make it pay you back. All right. Hey.
Lord, sometimes I'll be turning my back to you. I'll be running from your voice. I've been running from my purpose. I'm tired of running. I'm here to stay now. Sometimes I feel like giving up. I am only human, I be going through it too. Now lift me up. Pray for me, cause I'm feeling weak. I know the joy of the Lord is my strength, but I'm sinking deep. Deep down in my tears as I weep, Lord. As I think of my regrets, is when I sing more. So I'm asking, Lord, take this pain from me. Turn my life around, cause I know this ain't for me. Jesus, I know you paid the price for sin, but I need you to save my life again. And I can't do this without you, Lord. I am desperate and dying to know you more. Please forgive for all the times I turn from you. Lord, I give you all of my life. I worship you. Please forgive for all the times I turn from you. Lord, I give you all of my life. I worship you. Lord, take my weakness and turn it into strength. Take my failures and turn it into love for you. Yeah, I don't want to run from you. Yeah, yeah. I just want to run. Lord, take my weakness and turn it into strength. Take my failures and turn it into love for you. Yeah, I don't want to run from you. Yeah, yeah. I just want to run to you.
telling me not be afraid I'm lost in darkness I'm asking would you make a way Whenever I kill the dude in the mirror with two side the blade I'm afraid that my pain is a painted picture of a pagan Not a shame, but I'm ashamed to the slain land When I can't stand for the grace, but I make plans to negate that I'm afraid when I straight that, I don't pace back I'm afraid when I pace that, I'm a gaze back To the pain and the trauma, like in the cabinet Cover caliber, cannabis, seeking the killer candidate Got me looking the mannequins, and thinking I can relate to a city That happens, it's like I'm an enemy, follow the hand of me I'm inadequate, what it becoming the hand of the sick It's in a wickedness to be quick in me, but I quick in the cave to be killing me, sick of the blade and it's drilling me Like I've been in the military, camp the back of the enemy line not be afraid I'm lost in darkness I'm asking would you make a way Would you make a way
found me, I was lost Deep down I was drowning, about to pull the trigger but Your spirit didn't allow me I was caught up in a mess, was stuck in my head Pistol on the side of my bed, I never could rest Really could have died for my sin, thank god I'm not dead I was really contemplating death, strap pressed to my neck Couldn't on my breath, nothing less but a test Really had no one to help, no one left to impress So I said under my breath, I am stressed, I'm depressed I know I can't save myself when you saw me, I was lost, but you found me, knew everything about me Everybody tryna count me out, but you wrap your wings all around me And you heard me when yeah. I cry, yeah. will yeah. you take me yeah. when I die? Trouble getting up today. I don't wanna give up, but it's tough to say. I gotta be a man and not run away. I really need to talk to God about my pain. Will you wash it away? He said, Son, you are already clean. You just see yourself defeated, but that's not how I see it. Just trust me, resist the devil, he about to flee. You put my life aside to be set apart. I gotta reach the finish line, ain't no head start. Everyone who had left at me left scar. I know this life can really get hard. I'm ready for the next part. I was lost, gone right. I felt the breeze, then the sunlight. Man, my God is on time. I'll exalt you, all eyes. So I fall, cause I know what you yeah. I'll be all yeah. right. Will you take me when I die? Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Background Check Podcast, brought to you by Forgiven Felons, helping people with a past realize their future. For more information, please visit ForgivenFelons.org. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and please don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss the latest episode. I'm J.D. Gum, and this has been Background Check.